Atalanta played Inter, the game finished 1-1. The good news for Inter is that Lautaro scored again. The bad news is that once again, it wasn't enough for a win. It's now just one win in their last eight competitive games. Antonio Conte said afterwards that Inter are lacking a killer instinct and said a coach can only do so much. The players are on the pitch. And they must know how to adjust to various oh situations. God. I'll get Nina's thoughts on Antonio Conte's comments in just a moment. But Nikki, is it as bad as it seems at Inter? Oh, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to see that Mina's still here. I thought she might combust at that <laughs> sentence from Antonio Conte. I was, I was watching her screen. Um, look, I'm not going to, by the way, defend Antonio Conte particularly. Um, so I'm not uh, here to do that. I think that this was... I think this game against Atalanta was one of their better performances in lots of ways. I thought they played some good attacking football. There was um, one move in particular that didn't come to anything in the end where um, Vidal got put through on goal, which was just one of the most Antonio Conte combinations um, that I've seen in a while. It's that quick, clearly practiced by rote type of move that you see from that team when it's functioning, when it's working, that sort of quick counter-attacking. We know exactly where each other's going to be because we've done this a hundred times. And... Um, I thought there were patches of that. Uh, I thought they, as in a few games, um, put together some good attacking football. I think there's been so much focus on Lukaku and then Lautaro and the responsibility on him that a lot of what's been missed is they are actually scoring a good number of goals in turn. They're not really doing that badly up front. They're doing very badly at the other end where last season they were the um, best defence in all of Serie A and this season they've already shipped 11 goals. So in some ways, I would say even then, this was a more responsible defensive performance. They didn't give Atalanta all that much space. Although I would say also, this feels like quite a damaged Atalanta team psychologically at the moment as well. So it was a bit of a game between two teams who aren't fully, fully there. I did have sort of one point that I think we haven't talked about with Inter and I'm hesitant to do it before going to Mina because I know Mina is ready to, to kill Conte. And I'll say again, I'm not here to defend everything that's happened with this team. I think they've underperformed, but... I don't think anybody would dispute that um, the, the demands being put on footballers all across Europe now is a lot. Um, and those demands are highest for teams that are playing in European competition. And perhaps they are higher still for a team that went to the final of a European competition and therefore had the, the smallest break before starting the season. And perhaps then you look at the fact that on top of all of that, Inter were last season the club that covered the most ground per game in terms of kilometres run um, in every match. Should we be that surprised in all that, that they're not starting this, this season looking that brilliant? I think, you know, I was looking at this earlier and you could sort of offset that with the fact that guess who's run the fewest um, kilometres in all of Serie A so far this season? Sassuolo. It turns out there is some benefit to knowing how to conserve your energies. And, you know, you could throw that at Conte as well. You could make that another stick to beat him with. I'll say again, this isn't a defense of Conte specifically, but I think it's worth keeping in mind when we talk about Inter this season that there are some things that are perhaps a bit harder for them than they are for some other teams. Look, I'm going to actually agree with that. You're right. You know, they haven't had so much time to really work on getting their fitness level up, but they do have Antonio Pintas, who I'm sorry, and turned around Madrid into a fitness machine um, and were capable of defeating teams and looking rather fresh after doing so, even in the Champions League finals. So you've invested a lot of money. You have the squad depth to be able to bring on players like Perisic and, um, you know, who, who did he bring, him, bring on with his substitutes? He just changed everything from the top to Ashraf Hakimi to bringing on, you know, a, a load of different players and he has that benefit that Sassuolo doesn't have that you know many others don't have the squad depth is what people accused in of Juventus not having so if you have that then you need to use that you know better and also maybe you need to learn how to use the ball better so that you don't expend so much energy on covering ground obviously that is the stick that everyone beats him with I don't have much to say on this, weirdly enough. Um, I, I get I take issue with somebody who tells me who's being paid 12 million net a season and turns around and says, well, there's only so much a coach can do. <laughs> yeah, I do take issue with that because when I when I look at Roma and the fact that they can play about four different ways with they can go from playing through the wings, through the middle with a, a young team to an old team. When I look at Lazio making it through with absolutely no players after COVID, 
when I look at all of this, how Stefano Pioli has developed each and every player to think for themselves, how Ivan Khuric has done that with a side that has largely sold off all of its best players, I turn around and I'd be like, are you really being serious with me that you're all the money that has been spent on not just your management team, but on the players that you have to tell me you have no alternatives? And when a lot of the good things that came out of that game is because Brozovic thought for himself and knew when to widen and when to go in, I thought, you know, he was amazing in that game for me, personally speaking. I'd always like him to start. I don't think he's a Luka Modric or, a, you know, Kevin De Bruyne or one of those types of players, but a very smart one. And I think this is what shows you the tactical limitations of Antonio Conte. He's very good with routines that they have studied. Um, and he's good when he's placed as a coach of a team that has a, a thinker, an Andrea Pirlo and Eden Hazard. But right now, Brozovic is, is, is as far as it goes on into. There isn't many that think for themselves. They're more soldiers that will listen to his instructions. So when the hard moments come and you aren't want them to think for themselves, they don't know how to because he doesn't know how to develop that within them. And this is where I think that I, I can't see anything really being unpredictable with the way they're playing, which is why we all constantly talk about Lautaro Martinez, Lukaku, and who's not giving you enough. Right now, they're lacking balance. And I think they were better defensively. But I do expect a lot more from Antonio Conte. And I do expect tactical flexibility. For the second straight week, I'm actually going to be very positive about Inter. And I know it's strange that they've only had one win in their last eight and everyone thought, okay, they're going to challenge Juventus for the Scudetto. Some bookies, I think, even had them as the favorites to well, win the Serie A. This is, sorry, just to make you off, Matteo, this is another like thing to say. Like, Inter and Juventus, take away a game that Juventus didn't play, a win that they were given, there's nothing between them. So the idea that they're out of the title race, I don't see that at all. I completely agree. First of all, it's super early in the season, but... The positives I took from this game, first of all, Lautaro, who, as expected, of course, he's going to bounce back from a rut that he's had. He had at the same time last season that he started going with the dry patch in terms of goal scoring. It started early for him in this season, but he's shown he can get it done in the Champions League with or without Lukaku because he's just that good. But Arturo Vidal, I thought, had a very positive game. And with this Arturo Vidal who drives forward, we know he can get you goals. He did it at Barcelona. He did it in his, in his peak at Juventus. He's someone who makes a player like Christian Eriksen completely irrelevant for what Inter do. When you have Barella and Vidal who can get forward and join the attack, which they can do quite well, and you get back Stefano Sensi and he's healthy and he can orchestrate and Brozovic can, can you know play those nice passes as well. You don't need a number 10. And this is why Eriksen never fit in. And it's not even about Eriksen, but more to do with the box-to-box -box role that Barella and Vidal can do when they're joining the attack and they're attacking almost like Lazio do with Luis Alberto Malinkovic joining Correa and Immobile, where it's like this box of four that get into the final third. This is how I see the best version of Inter. When you have Barella, Vidal joining Lukaku and Lautaro, you have the wingbacks who can make those overlapping runs, and suddenly you can have a side that can break down probably anyone when they're at their best. So I did take some positives. I like the way Arturo Vidal got forward, the way he played, and obviously Lautaro getting back to scoring now that Lukaku is coming back as well. I expect Inter to have gotten the worst of the season out of the way and then to finally start playing as their ability would indicate. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.